It was hard as fuck. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus. More for this, but like, we're watching Game of Thrones. Okay, why do you feel guilty? Because, like, I, cause, like I feel like I should be making beats all the time. Bro, I watch... <laughs> Listen, I've watched all seven seasons, every episode, ten each. Ten episodes. <laughs> I'm fucking... I'm obsessed, bro. You haven't watched it more than I have, so continue. I think you were working more hours a week than you are now, or...? Yeah. I was. I made a conscious decision to adjust my life in, in a way that just kind of like brings ultimate joy. And so I like taking weekends off. I prefer not working after 7 p.m. I like waking up super early. It's like just stuff that works for me. You got bars. <laughs> Putting out music. Are you on Instagram? Are you on? Starting to put out music right now. I just spent like almost all the last year recording. I got like 30 songs ready to go. Here's the thing about annoying people until they pay attention. The trick is to gain people's attention because they want it, mm -hmm. and not because you're being annoying, right? Like, you know, back uh, back in the day, like when television, like before internet, like when television was like the number one platform. You have all these commercials, you know, like we all hate commercials when we watch TV, right? For a long time, commercials were effective because it was all about mass and numbers. It was like, if we can get a hundred million people to see these commercials, then 1% of them will bite down and purchase our product. The fucked up thing is that as artists and producers here, we were sort of brainwashed and programmed to think that we have to take that same approach. So our instinct tells us that we have to reach massive amounts of people in order to be successful, right? And which is the majority. So when you look at the majority of people, the majority is sort of in the middle, right? That 80%. And then you have the 10% on the left and 10% on the right which are sort of the edges, right? These are people that live on the edges. When you try to focus on people in the middle, the people in the middle don't really give a shit. They're like, they're ready to just consume whatever's given to them, right? In order, in order to get to the masses in music, you have people that are just making disposable music to try to appeal to that 80%. And so you're basically making music for people that don't care about you, which is not good, right? So I think, we have to kind of switch our thinking. We want to make music for people that care. And in order to make music for people that care, focus on and nurture those first few fans that jump on board with what we're doing. And if we're patient enough to build that up, then we start to build an organic fan base. Uh, just like what Russ did and Logic and, you know, J. Cole and all these guys. And, and once you get those first hundred people that really fuck with you for what you do, they're gonna tell all their friends. And that's the proper way to do it. And unfortunately, most of us are impatient. We bow out too early, or we think it's about getting on a big playlist, which is completely false and and the wrong way to do it. So- How were the Dreamville sessions? They were good. <laughs> <laughs> they were good. Just really cool to like see everyone in one room. If you had gotten invited, as soon as you walk in, like you really have to take initiative and you're basically on your own. I feel very blessed to be able to like go there and interact and create and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to it. Hey. Do you feel like you have any challenge, like specific challenges right now? Like what's your number one challenge right now? I think kind of just like, literally just the confidence thing, throwing myself out there. There's times like if I'm gonna post during the day, I have to take like an hour off of work. Right. Studio, what well, you said you're building a studio space? Yeah. You know, if, if you somehow maybe get an intern or someone that could work with you, that you can like kind of mold and train, yeah. that could be a good approach to alleviating that problem. Yeah. Or if you get called to work, you can have your assistant kind of take over <laughs> while you're gone. The Social media thing, I'm sure you've read about it and have done research. It really, it's just about applying what you learned. And the whole like confidence thing is so such a bizarre thing. There's this guy that I like super like idolize. His name is uh, Seth Godin. Yeah. You know his um, theory with the chicken brain and the fear? Isn't that so genius? Totally. But this guy, Seth Godin, has this sort of theory, not even really theory, I believe it's fact that, you know, when you think of like a chicken, a chicken's brain sort of works off of fear, and that's how a lot of wild animals work. 
and they react to fear. We do as well, you know, early versions of human beings reacted in fear, so like if a tiger came running, we would probably run away because we were fearful and that's what allowed for us to survive the wilderness. And so we still have those same types of brains and so a lot of our decisions are, are rooted and based in fear. You know, the insecurity of like putting our music out and posting something on Instagram saying, oh, like, I hope people don't, you know, leave any negative comments or I hope people like my beat or is this picture perfect and stuff like that. And once you start to think about the idea that when you put yourself out there, you're really just experiencing trauma before it before it happens really at the end of the day so you're you're doubling up on misery you know it's, it's not the easiest thing but you know when you put yourself out there you really have to focus on the idea that it's for people that care and it's for people that can relate to what you do you know instead of being caught up with trying to impress everyone i say all that to say that you know like you just got to kind of put yourself out there try some different things you sound like you really know what you're doing Welcome to and <laughs> one week or two weeks. Like, how do you not make it become oversaturated? Where you want people to not forget about your last release? The, the, there's so much music out there, and people have such short attention spans that people don't have time to keep tabs. And so, all we need to focus on is the people that care about the music we're making. And so if you put a hundred songs out in a month, cool. For people that think you're annoying, they don't belong in your fan base. But for the 10 people that really fuck with your shit, those are the people you need to come reply back to and nurture. You know, it's all about nurturing the people that like our stuff. You know, we're not selling insurance. We're providing amazing music for people that also think it's amazing. And that's it. Go ahead, and then uh, a little while earlier, you, you kind of knocked uh, like Spotify playlists, the way like uh, kind of the, the average consumer like listens and finds. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, getting on a Spotify playlist is amazing, yeah. uh, for sure. Um, but when you do the numbers, you know what what are what are the odds of getting on a playlist? The yeah. odds, there's so much music, and, and it's so tough. So putting. Putting energy into something that has low odds like that is, is so, it's like a difficult thing. Sometimes they discover new music and they put it on. Other times they're, you know, I hate to say it, but they're getting paid by labels. And the top, right in the top 20 songs are all reserved for, spoken for. Um, so it's really, it's so unpredictable and weird. It, it's really hard to even really say how to, how to get your stuff on a playlist. It's, it could be anything, it's, it's so, so random, you know? But to be on a playlist is, is great, of course, absolutely. You know. Like a Nicolas Cage movie? <laughs> uh, definitely not, not Nicolas, Nicolas Cage slow-mo. Like, <laughs> yeah. Nah, like, uh, have you, have you um, pursued like licensing music at all or know anything about it? No. Yeah, so it's really cool because with the boom of like Netflix and stuff, there's like a lot of, there's like a shitload of shows now and they're all scrambling for music. Companies like Jingle Punks and um, a couple other ones, they're really like thriving right now because there's so much content that needs music and so they're able to distribute the music to shows like Netflix and stuff. And so we rock, like with shit like that, yeah. it's like so, I'm noticing it's like so high in demand and they're looking for super original, like kind of rock kind of stuff like that with lyrics and all that stuff. Like my publisher, I'm with um, Cobalt. Cobalt has an entire licensing division. Mm -hmm. And anytime there's an opportunity, they always, you know, I'm one of the people they, they talk to and, yeah. and ask, do you have, hey, do you have this kind of track or this? And I never do. Because I don't make shit like that. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, so look into that. I would start with like this website called Jingle Punks. That's like a commercial, a car commercial too. Yeah, yeah. that? Hell yeah. That'd be sick. Hell yeah, bro. Toyota Tundra. Fucking yeah. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota Tundra. Uh, yeah, man. That's some quality shit right there. Yeah.